Hey guys, what's up? It's Zetek here, and in this video, I'll compare the iOS 7 to the Android 4.3. So, starting from the lock and home screen, the lock screen is the very first thing a user sees upon turning their smartphone on and which is why its flawless execution is of utmost importance so and it is hard to decide which one we like more uh, the one on iOS 7 or on Android 4.3 but I'm pretty sure that they both leave room for improvements. So the iOS 7 lock screen is minimalist, uh, providing instant access to camera, the control center or the pending notification. However, it would have been better if one could slide uh, either way to unlock it or only, or only a swipe to the right takes you to the home screen. The Android 4.3 lock screen is flexible when it comes to customization and with its all widgets and it doesn't matter which way you swipe to unlock However, the selection of widgets uh, one can place there isn't a broad as we wish it was. So overall, both lock screen are great, although there could have been better. On home screen on an iPhone 5 and iPhone 5 or iPhone 5C, there's room for uh, 24 icons in total. Interestingly, a stock Android home screen on a Google Nexus 4 leaves room for only 20 apps shortcuts even though the smartphone has a larger display with a higher resolution and of course there's not too big of a deal especially when both interfaces allow apps to be sorted in folders speaking of which the iOS 7 approach to folders is more elegant as there is virtually no limit to how many apps the user can place in one on Android its stock form there is a limit of 16 apps per folder which isn't bad but it is a drawback nonetheless and the layout of an iOS 7 home screen is well designed and but perhaps it's all a bit too static and which is why I tend to like the versatility of Android. It is just that the widgets are pretty cool and features the Apple the features that Apple's mobile OS has yet to adopt in one form or another. And I don't see this happening anytime soon, but there are things that Android might learn from iOS 7. One of them is that the text which is used to display the name of the apps changes color depending on what wallpaper image is being used, but it doesn't work with the dynamic wallpapers for some reason. But if the image is light and the text goes dark and vice versa, which makes apps name much easier to read. On Android 4.3, there's a shadow under the apps names, but still text isn't a legible as it is on iOS 7. So next thing that I will talking about is the quick controls and notifications. So control centers add functionality that iOS sorely needed. Simply put swiping up from the bottom of an iOS 7 home screen bring up a list of toggle buttons for turning things like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on and off, controlling music playback, adjusting the screen brightness, even using the camera's LED as a flashlight. But control center isn't really a groundbreaking feature. Options like these have been available on custom Android UIs for a long time and a stock Android 4.3 interface has many of them as well all of the box located in a menu accessible from the notification bar. Furthermore, Control Center might be triggered accidentally if one is scrolling on a page or trying to launch the camera from its lock screen shortcut. So located in the lower which is located in the right hand corner. Yet nevertheless, Apple's solution to adding toggles in iOS 7 is pretty elegant and it is at least as good as Android's approach. The, notif the notification center in the iOS 7 has been overhauled and now takes the user straight to their agenda and that's very convenient for people who actually use the calendar app. Those who find it too crowded in there are free to pick what notifications are there to be displayed there and the stocks information, the unre email, the game center alerts, reminders and more. While the Android's notification bar is a bit different for it doesn't display much if there aren't any pending notification but on the other hand the users does get updated via Google now so a noteworthy advantage for iOS 7 versus the Android is that both the notification center and the control center can be accessed from any screen even when they are hidden yup even if you are playing a game or watching a movie however a double slide is required in order to do that which prevents the user from accidentally pulling out either of them and in Android the notification panel is often not visible if a full screen application is running which renders it un in or you can say inaccessible. 
The next thing I will talk about is the customization features. When it comes to customization, Android is still king with its widgets, live wallpaper and custom launchers. Ton of them are available for download from Play Store for anyone bored or for their devices uh, interface. And however, Apple has done some progress and is now catching up without making things too complicated for iOS 7 users. The latest version of the platform features so-called parallax effect which shifts the background image depending on the angle and which the handset is being held. That creates an illusion of depth and the effect is really nice in my opinion and it's pretty yet unobtrusive. So in addition we have Apple's dynamic wallpapers and yep they are just like the Android's uh, live wallpapers and these can be set on both home and lock screen. Unfortunately all you get out of the box is a single dynamic wallpaper in several different colors and the wallpaper is suspiciously similar to Android stock and face being live wallpaper like the face being live wallpaper as I say. So I hope that someday more dynamic wallpaper will be released on iOS 7 but this could be just a wishful thinking. The next is the dialer and contact. So what's great about iOS 7 in that category is that it lets you block some certain contacts you want, thus preventing them from uh, calling or texting or even initiating a FaceTime conversation with the users. And the Android phone app is very similar uh, to the iOS 7 uh, phone app, namely that it displays a photo, uh, a photo of each contact, uh, but, but it has a notable advantage over the iOS 7 is that it displays a photo of each contact as you scroll down the list while the iPhone's contact app shows a contact image only if you tap on them to view the detailed information or if that particular contact is in your favorite. The next up is the on-screen keyboard and messaging. With iOS 7 and the iPhone in particular, we can easily type text using a single thumb because the phone width is optimal for the purpose. The Google Nexus for running Android 4.3 is wider and is therefore more comfortable to use with two thumbs rather than one. And that is visually uh, valid for uh, the Android device with a screen of uh, 4.5 inches and above. Overall, both virtual keyboards are pretty nice, yet perhaps Android has slightly advantage in this category with its dedicated smiley key. And when it comes to messaging, iOS has the upper hand over Android with iMessage system. These features work along with the uh, work with uh, the Wi-Fi connection as long as the recipient also uses an iPhone uh, or any other Apple device. Moreover, the iMessage is usually faster uh, in sending regular text than the um, uh, than the text on the mobile connectivity. And it would be nice if one day Android integrates Hangouts with the messaging app and thus replicated to some extent the functionality of the Apple's iMessage service. The next up is the email. Whether you are using iOS 7 or Android 4.3, setting up your email account is a straightforward process requiring you to input your uh, password and, and your email. But on the Android 4.3, there are some differences with the iOS 7 that you have uh, three different uh, the categories, namely the primary inbox, the priority, and the social inbox. And on the other hand, Apple has the VIP inbox feature which collects email from people you mark as very important. The marking process, how, however, has to be done manually. In terms of productivity tool, the calendar application is in iOS 7 and 4.3 are very similar in terms of appearance and functionality. Therefore, there's not much difference and I can't say which one is better. And in terms of calculator on both platforms, uh, both looks similar. But those who need access to advanced functions often will appreciate iOS 7 solution a lot more. The advanced panel in the uh, iOS 7 is accessible as soon as the phone is flipped in the landscape mode. While the stock Android 4.3 requires the users to bring the phone Forth, uh, bring forth the advanced ma uh, panel manually. And also we find uh, the clock on the iOS 7 uh, better designed than the Android. That's not only uh, because its home screen icon is now displayed at the actual time. And it is more intuitive to use and better looking uh, with easy to access additional timekeeping features. And furthermore, I must mention that iOS 7 has apps for notes and reminders out of the box. While on stock and 4.3, these has to be downloaded separately. On top of that, you get a compass that is a built in leave level as well and Apple's Passbook app which keeps track of your boarding passes and movie tickets, retail coupons and more. And clearly iOS 7 is loaded with more goodies out of the box. The next up is the multitasking and uh, 
support for multiple users. So, well, we have nothing to complain about really when it comes to both platform implementation of multitasking. Switching between apps on both iOS 7 and Android 4.3 is pretty straightforward. Apple Mobile OS now provides app preview uh, like Windows, like in Windows and uh, unlike in pre a previous uh, version uh, where the apps were listed only with their icon. So, multitasking on Android is also executed well with recent apps listed vertically along with the screenshot of their last date. The next up is the Siri vs Google Now. So the Siri recognizes commands spoken in everyday language so you can ask it to set your alarm clock, a reminder or even send a message to specific contact or get you driving directions. Moreover, Siri can search the web via Bing and also the users who don't speak English have no worries. Siri recognizes the input in French and German as well. On the other hand, the Google Now is very straightforward. For example, the driving direction will appear if it is the end of the workday. Uh, if you just looked up some place on Google Maps, Google Now will show you how to get there when triggered. And if you have a planned trip coming, uh, it will provide you with up-to-date details about your flight. And if you are in different country, Google Now lists uh, list, uh, places of interest and uh, currency exchange rates and other useful information. All in all, both Siri and Google Now are great additions complementing the overall user's experience and can come in handy in all kinds of situations. The next up is internet browsing. So the Chrome on Android 4.3 and Safari is on iOS 7. Both are ideal for surfing the web. However, I only wish that Chrome has Safari's reader mode, which cleans all unnecessary content from a web page, leaving only an articles, text and some image for easier reading. The next up is Maps. So the Maps of the Apple has uh, been improved lately. The fact uh, is that the Apple Maps application is now more reliable and has all the features one would expect out of a proper app of this kind. It can give you adequate directions depending on whether you are driving, walking or using public transportation. Locations can be quickly shared with other or bookmarked for future use. Same features can be found on Google Maps as well, while neither solution can provide you with true offline navigation in a way that Nokia Maps would and both Apple Maps and Google Maps can catch map data in order to navigate without relying on the connectivity of internet. In terms of camera UI image gallery, the stock camera interface on the Android 4.3 is very mm, difficult and frustrating and I assume that Google had tried uh, to simplify its use by making all the knobs and switches available at a tap distance but that clearly not a solution for all users would be comfortable with. While the iOS 7 camera interface on the other hand is simple initiative, even a newbie can get the hang of it in no time. And the iOS 7 gallery application has grown smarter now and it can sort your images based on the time and location were taken at the, uh, at where they were taken at and it also lets you edit the image by adding filter and stuff like that also a uh, sharing options online and uh, although there's a huge drawback here is that uh, the sharing via the other apps or service like Instagram or Skype or WhatsApp for example is not available while Android had this option for ages and the Android 4.3 apps can also edit and share images as well as to sort them by date or location so I don't think it is any less functional it would be cooler if there were no more thumbnail sizes available in grid view. The next up is the multimedia. When it comes to multimedia playback, Android 4.3 does not care how you load music or videos on the device. The user is free to hook the smartphone, tablet, or computer. Just copy and paste their media onto folder by folder. Of course, one also has the option to purchase songs or movies via Google Play with iOS 7. However, you don't quite have any much freedom. The iTunes application is what you must install on your computer and use to transfer music or video into your iOS device. Not that it is too bad for a solution and especially when doing so help to keep your music organized but some uh, might find uh, the limitation annoying and if we have to pick uh, the uh, between the iOS 7 music player app and the play music on the Android 4.3 I most likely go with the former uh, that the iOS 7 the Apple solution just feels a bit are better organized although Google's music player is definitely not bad either the both Google uh, both apps uh, allows one to control music playbacks from the lock screen and it definitely makes a uh, thing more convenient and also they both come in built-in streaming music services iTunes radio for Apple iOS 7 and play music for the Google's Android and uh, the ability to stream whatever audio has stored in the cloud now it's time for the conclusion both iOS 7 and Android 4.3 are good 
and pretty well made but if you want cleaner and elegant uh, UI then you must go with iOS 7 but if you want tweaks and customization and more control on your smartphone than the Apple iPhones then you must go with the end of 0.3 thanks for watching guys that's it for now and if you enjoyed my video and my effort then please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe peace out